All right, hello and welcome. My name is Jason Welsh, and uh, welcome to another lesson in animation. If you turn your attention to HowStuffTutorials.net slash lesson files, you'll find Kit One. Kit One is an OBJ. When you go File Import, and then Kit One, what'll happen is it'll show up like this. All right, sometimes in Dynamics, uh, what you're going to come across is the fact that one object has one center of mass. And uh, this comes to be a problem because if one item has one center of mass, then only one um, constraint can be assigned to one object. Okay, but there's special circumstances where that might not be true. but in this circumstance, it sure is. We have uh, something that has one center of mass, and we need it to have three centers of mass. Okay, so what I do is usually trick the system into believing it has more than one center of mass. And how I do that is I create an item that has like a little hole in it, and another item with a little hole in it. And what I'll do here is grab this, a little rivet, modify center pivot, Let's modify center pivot for all these. If I modify center pivot for one, I could just click on the next one and hit G. G on the keyboard, G on the keyboard, G, 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 and G. There we go, they're all fixed. Okay, let's put this little rivet in this hole. And we're gonna line this up rather good. It has to... Got a new mouse pad and not quite used to it yet. I don't know how many people use mouse pads nowadays. I don't know. There we go. Okay, control D to duplicate item. And I'm going to put one over here. So you can see that fits just inside that hole. Okay, let's line that up in all views. Okay, just like that. Okay, so now that item has now three centers of mass. Okay, let's take this little setup here, put it in the middle, and raise it up some. Okay, let's put this item in right about here. Let's take and line that up. What I want to do is kind of find the center of this item, but I won't know it yet. Okay, if I want to find the center, you notice if I click on it, the bar appears. And I can move that in. Okay, now let's take this item and put something on it. Let's go to dynamics and put a hinge constraint on it. And you can see that tells me exactly where the center is at. So I can now move this item about the center of that. Okay, now that that's done, we have another rivet. Let's take this platter and bring it over here. Take this rivet and put it inside this hole. Okay, just like that. We need four of those rivets. Okay, just like that. Okay, let's take all of that and move it over. And align that. If you can't tell what we're making yet, well, it's a scale. So we're gonna put one here, control D, duplicate it, and move it over to the other side. Okay, so we have this. Okay, and these are our weights right here. Okay, so now what we have to do is grab this one and then this one and go pin constraint. 
this one and this one G and the keyboard this one this one G and the keyboard this one this one G and the keyboard and do the same so these are all pin constraints I'm just speeding things along Okay, and let's take our weights, put one over here, put one over here, and right now these aren't weights, so we're going to click on both of them and go to active rigid bodies, and let's take the one on the left hand side and assign it a mass of 1.2. So just a little bit heavier than the other one. Okay, so so far this is already a dynamic because it, it has a constraint on it. These are all dynamic because they have constraints. This platter and this platter are not because you can see they do not have any kind of solver on it. So I need those to be active. This thing does not have one, so it needs to be passive. I don't want anything to walk go through it. What else is missing? Well, gravity. Now I'm only going to assign gravity to these items. Dynamics, gravity. And let's see what happens. Let's expand this out. Go to, let's say, 500 frames. Hit enter on the keyboard, click and drag this one out, click and drag it out of this way, and hit play. And there we go. Dynamic scale. And this one weighs a little bit more, so it's automatically going to dip down a little bit further. Okay, so that's your assignment. Uh, if you followed around with the video, your assignment should be done. If not, uh, well, get to it. And when you're done, save that as an MB file and upload it to me on Educator. All right, have a good one, and until next tutorial.